This is The Big AR Show. Hello and welcome to The Big AR Show. My name is Chris Black and today I'm going to show you how VizRT can help you enhance any broadcast using augmented reality graphics in the studio. First off, let me tell you a little bit about the tools that we're going to be using here today. Just behind me, I have this massive video wall. This is a video wall from Laird and Planar, and we are going to add in virtual sets to the video wall to create a very unique virtual environment. Also just in front of me, I have a camera on a Shotoku pedestal. This is a mechanical tracking system, so as the camera moves around in the studio, you are going to be able to see that movement in our virtual set. And over here, we have an in-cam optical tracking system that's going to allow us to take the cameras handheld into the studio for some very interesting effects. So, let's get started. Let's bring in a virtual set into our video wall here behind us. Here we have the Fox Sports uh, studio. It's kind of dark. Why don't we bring up the lights in the studio? It's a little too much, bring them back down again. And uh, bring up lights all over the studio so we can see what's going on here. Now we have real-time lighting in our virtual set here. So we can control the lighting effects in the virtual studio just like you would in the physical studio. So let's bring up all of those lights here. And as the camera moves around, you can see that we have a lot of movement in the virtual set as well. We call this the virtual window. And this allows you to expand your studio space back into the video wall, giving you a lot more room to work with in a limited studio environment. But this is the big AR show, so we want to have some augmented reality graphics here. So let's bring in the Fox Sports NFL graphics package and see what we can do here. Here's our Fox Sports tunnel. Again, you have that nice movement as it's moving around. Let's bring in some augmented reality graphics. We have the NFL post-game graphic here. Now this is an augmented reality graphic here directly in front of me, meaning submersed in the studio floor in front of me. But we can do these augmented reality graphics on multiple levels. We can also have them in the video wall and do transitions between the virtual environment. So here we have Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson. Now these are part of a journalist workflow, so your journalists in the newsroom have control over all the content of these elements and can drive them just like any other live production from story to story. Let's take these out and bring them into the physical world and expand our virtual set out from the video wall into the physical studio. So here we have those uh, graphics again. Now you see these football players are photos of the football players, but we can actually have full character animations as well. In fact, we have Fox Sports' Cletus here. Cletus, where are you? Why don't you come out here and join us? He's going to run through, smash through our video wall, walk out into the audience to say hi to everybody. Let's do that one more time. This is a real-time character animation that is rendering in real-time in Viz Engine. We can have him run through. He does a transition from the virtual environment into the uh, physical world using the AR technology. Chris, can you do that again? Let's do it one more time here. Let's have him do it one more time. Cletus, come on out here one more time. There we go. So, now with sports content, you have a lot of data that needs to be visualized in very interesting ways. And to help us out with that, we're going to bring in our friends from Astuce Media, who have their data platform applied to a number of different uh, football matches. So here's the data platform. They provide data services or creative services. Now we want to do a combination of the video wall, augmented reality graphics, and a touch screen that I have over here. So. What I'm going to do now is bring up some content in our touch screen. We'll open up a Champions League. And here I have a number of football games that I can talk about. And each one of these, we have all the data from each one of those matches. When I bring up a match, we'll bring in uh, Barcelona and Paris, we're already now controlling the video wall. And I can take a look at the data and change this on the video wall. So as a presenter, I have control over all the content in the studio. Now as we push back a little bit more, we've also added in augmented reality graphics on the studio floor. So here I have all these football players ready for me to uh, control. So on my touch screen, I can go over it and grab the players and very easily just grab him. We'll grab Trap over here and move him. And you can see that all, each player is highly interactive. So I can change their positions on the field and talk about how they were uh, playing the game using this highly interactive tool. But we can also do a head-to-head -head matchup on the players themselves. And we have 3D models of all the players in the Champions League. So here the Barcelona team, we can have uh, Neymar there or Messi. We'll take a look at a common head-to-head -head of Messi and Draxler. There we go. So now we have that head-to-head -head matchup here. I'm going to walk out here and take a look now. Here I can get myself right in between the two players using the AR content. And we can see all of this data where I'm going with the forward passes. So we can see that Messi had 21 forward passes versus Drexler's three. And if I were back at the video wall and I can touch screen, I could change this and you could see all of this updating in real time. So you could really see how Barcelona was able to dominate Paris in this particular match. 
But you look at these two characters on either side of me. We're going to do a little bit more with them now. So to do that, we're going to bring in a graphics package created by Sky Germany using the uh, uh, FC or uh, Bayern Munich uh, football team. So let's bring in the Champions League logo into our uh, video wall here. There it is. Let's bring in uh, Bayern Munich out here as well. Here are the guys. Now let's bring some of these guys. Let's have David walk out into the studio to join us and uh, Boateng as well. Now these are very high resolution 3D scans that Sky Germany has done of all of the players in the Bundesliga. And each, as each one of these comes out here, we're going to be able to take a look at the details that make up these high resolution 3D scans and see what we can do with them in a virtual environment. In fact, now we have the uh, goalkeeper out here. Let's take the camera and do a 180 around that goalkeeper so you can see the 3D model that we have added to the studio here. You can see it is a massive 3D model that we're rendering here in real time. In fact, let's go over to Boateng for a moment and take a closer look at the high resolution that we have in this 3D model by zooming and take a look at these uh, impressive uh, tattoos that he's got here. We'll zoom on in there and you can see this extremely high resolution. And we have these uh, scans available for all of the uh, players in the Bundesliga, all created by Sky Sports. And they're using this for their weekly sports coverage. Now, augmented reality graphics are all about telling stories. And so the Weather Channel also does a very nice uh, uh, presentation with this every week during their Ender Lab segment. And they've given us some of the tools that they've uh, used on the air in the past here. So let's take a look at this new one here. We have this virtual window now of Chicago. We want to expand the virtual environment from the video wall out into the studio floor. So we're going to drive on out there, extend the road out there. So we, now we have our uh, family minivan going on there. But let's take a look at some of the traffic dangers that you can have when driving with ice on your car. So here we have this minivan with snow covering the top of it. Now as your car is driving down the road, especially in cold conditions, that snow is compacting and turning into ice. And then wind can catch that ice and rip it off the roof of your car, just as it's doing here. And that can cause a lot of danger for the other cars in the traffic because at high speeds, this ice that's over 100 pounds can be hitting a car behind you at 10 tons of force causing a lot of damage. So always make sure that you clean off the snow and ice off your car in the wintertime before you go driving to help everybody else on the streets. Not really a problem here in Las Vegas though. But let's take a look at some other weather content that we can work with. And the Weather Channel also does a lot of work with da our weather data in the studio. So let's take a look and bring some satellite imagery and take a look at the anatomy of a tornado. So here we have our supercell here, and this is where tornadoes are born. These supercells are rotating storms that have a lot of intensity to them. In fact, here you can actually start to see that, uh, that hook echo, which is a telltale sign of a tornado. Now these supercells are pretty tall. This is, we're just looking at a 2D version. Let's expand this up and take a look at how big the supercell is. And this can go extend up to 30, 40, 50,000 feet into the air. But the tornado is actually the smallest part down at the bottom and actually the most dangerous part. So let's lift this up a moment and take a look at the tornado itself. So now we have the tornado here in the studio. Now tornadoes are formed from these supercells, but it's a combination of events that are bringing them in. So we have that rear flank downdraft, that warm, moist air, creating that rotation that is giving you that uh, funnel cloud that you see there coming from that supercell. Now the most dangerous parts of the tornado, of course, is the center of the tornado itself, but that debris field is also very, very dangerous. And you can send a lot of debris flying and injuring people that are nearby. Now the Weather Channel's designers did just win our graphics, our, our design competitions earlier this year. So let's take a look at the uh, winning design that the Weather Channel added. And we have it here in our studio today, which is talking about conquering Mount Everest. So here we have Mount, uh, this nice 3D model of Mount Everest. There's a lot of little details that the Weather Channel added to this model that make it very, very nice, such as this avalanche that's coming down the mountain right now. You can see that snow coming down there of the uh, 19,000 foot mark. Now to, cl to climb Mount Everest, you have to start at the base camp, which is at 16,000 feet. And there you need to remain for a few days to be acclimated to the high elevation before you, before you start making your ascent up the mountain. As you move up the mountain further, when you get to 19,000 feet, this is where you're going to be camping out. And there the dangers are, as you saw, avalanches. As you go a little bit higher up the mountain, the, avalanche, the dangers increase, and you start having to deal with crevasses. And these can be covered up by ice and snow, so you never really know where they are. But when you do find them, they can be extremely deep, and the only way to cover them is by using very thin ladders like this one here. Now, as you keep on going up the mountain, you've gone into other dangers. At the 24,000 feet, the weather can be completely unpredictable. High storms, big storms can come in, high winds, hurricane force winds. 
clouds, and suddenly you have zero visibility. And even moving further up, you get into what we call the dead zone. And this is where there's no oxygen, or very low oxygen, freezing temperatures, high winds, and it can be very, very dangerous. And a lot of climbers die in this part of the uh, mountain each year. Now, if something does happen on the mountains, you have to rely on your team to help you get down because the elevations here are so high that you can't rely on helicopters to get you out. In fact, I think we have a helicopter coming up the mountain here to try to rescue some climbers at a low uh, elevation. There it is, it's going to be flying out there. Now, the helicopters are functional at lower altitudes where they can come in and help uh, climbers, but at higher altitudes, such as Wesley Point, past this certain point, they lose lift and it's dangerous for everybody, including the helicopter pilots. So you're really dependent upon your experienced team to help you get down that mountain. Now we want to do one more thing here in the studio. So here we've been talking about how to tell stories for traditional broadcast. But there's a new type of broadcast that is growing today and that is covering esports. Now esports is one of the fastest growing sports that you're seeing now on television and online. And to be able to tell the story of what's happening during eSports, we're going to do a combination of tools here. We're going to bring in our traditional broadcast tools, the Viz Engine, and we'll have this nice uh, stadium that we're bringing in here. This is uh, a 3D scan of the city of Duga. We're going to fly in to the arena itself and start bringing in some of the data-driven graphics from a, uh, a game here called Paragon from Epic, it's using the Unreal Engine. So here we can have the data of what's going on during the actual game, all updating in real time during the match, but we can also do profiles of the players matched up with their heroes by bringing in the Unreal Engine. So let's swap cameras over to the uh, in-cam system and go handheld and take a look at some of these players. So here we've got one of the heroes from uh, Paragon, and you can see it is all being rendered in real time with a combination of using the Unreal Engine to add in the, uh, the Hero and the Viz Engine, our graphics system, to be able to give you that live data-driven content and placing the, uh, the, the player, me, right here in the game with the actual presentation. So this is giving you a new way to be able to cover those lucrative esports by adding in the data-driven concepts of live sports production with the actual gaming tools that you have with the Unreal Engine. Now, if you have any questions about how all this is done, please come on up. We'll be happy to answer them for you. You've been a fantastic crowd, everybody. And enjoy the rest of the day here at NAB 2017.